Um, so we just want to get started on this. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I know we have a lot of people who are very excited to have you here. So um, I guess we'll just dive in. I'd love to get a sense of how you see the presidential race shaping up. Uh, the president had sort of a big weekend at Mount Rushmore, certainly a lot of attention on him. Um, and also during a week when his campaign manager penned an op-ed in the Washington Post establish establishing their strategy to go after Biden as an old man who's part of the problematic establishment. They're also positioning him as someone who would be pulled too far, perhaps to the left, um, by the progressive wing of his party. Biden hasn't been out as much except recently to defend Tammy Duckworth and also obviously over the weekend. Uh, can you give us an overview of how things are shaping up to you? It's stealing, it's stealing money. Just bet on Biden. Where are you going to get a return like that? Give a, give a, a, you, you're playing 60 cents on a dollar? I mean, it's stealing. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, what, it'd be like setting a money line and Kansas City Chiefs were playing Arkansas State and you had a 60 cent money line. What would you do? I mean, no, all you, you, know, you got to do is look at the polling averages. Look at the, in the last 20 things Cook Report has changed, 19 of them are going to the Democrats' way. Look at the Senate fundraising numbers. I mean, I, I don't know how to set that line, but I know I don't know any place I can get that kind of guaranteed return on my money. I already bought a government bond at, at one and a half percent. <laughs> you get this at 40%. Take it. So how, you, just there. how do you see the dynamics shaping up right now? If you could just provide like a broad overview of how everything. I, I said before, I think there's a better chance that he does not run, that he gets elected. And every day, the chance that he does not run gets increases. Let's not pretend this is going to be a cliffhanger. Let's don't pretend that this election is going to be close. It is not. It is set. It, every indicator that you can imagine is screaming at you. It's totally screaming at you. And we got, you got, for the first time, 85 cents will, will complete the first term. I mean, well, he'd have to get pardoned, you know, so I doubt if he would. He doubtfully pardon himself, but that he does not run for re-election. Put a line up there. And then if you can get, you know, 15, if you can get 15, 15%, take it. And that's, that's really worth the gamble. But, but whatever you do, take Biden right now at 60 cents. Take all you can get. Get your friends to beard in for you. Whatever you got to do, do it. Plow. That's my advice. Plow. So do you think he drops out? And at what point do you I think? There's a good chance that he will. Hmm. I, I think, uh, well, the main reason that I think there's a good chance he will is because he's going to get beat so bad, and he's going to know that. He's got all the way up to the Republican convention. Think of the, from June to 1st to today, what has happened. We're not even the middle of July yet. I mean, this is not a stationary thing. Every day there's a new catastrophe. Every day there's a catastrophic poll. Now Rasmussen has Biden up by 10 points. If you look at the most important number in polling for an incumbent is their vote. If you take the real clear politics average in the 538 average, he's at 41. It's probably what, as of now, that's where we'd end up at 41. That's a, give the third party three. So that brings it to about 56. Biden went by 15 points at that point. Yeah. I mean, this is not, you don't have to be, have done politics all your life to see what's going on. L look at these senators. Look at Lindsey Graham. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at all across the board. I mean, it's just evident to anything. Hurry up and get, to, get it at 60 cents. Mm -hmm. it's steal it. Do you think, you mentioned incumbent, incumbency, do you think his being an incumbent has any factor, do you think it's he's wiped it out? It's well, it's like you might think it's, he wiped it. it's all a factor in the world. Mm -hmm. and I think that he will conclude. I don't know. You know. I think Jared will. That they're worth more. That their business model is worth more with him saying the fake media and the, uh, 
deep state and you know i'm gonna come back and run in 2024 mm. uh, because if he if he gets beat the way that he's going to get beat his his, his commercial appeal viability will be zero mm. i mean he's already in a, in a failing business like the hotel resort business and people don't understand once you get beat bad Nobody wants to have anything to do with you. Nobody. Can, Not you, even. can you think of a politician who's come back from getting really walloped? I don't, because nobody's going to get beat as bad as he did. As bad as he's going to. It's going to be like Herbert Hoover. Hmm. But this is not going to be at remotely close. And plus, he's, he's old. He's not coming back, but let him indulge in his own fantasies. But he... No one is going to go to that stupid convention. It's all a racket. All they're doing is driving Ferraris. They're skimming everything off the top. And they're just offering betters a golden opportunity. I, I have no idea. If, if, you, if you're betting on Trump now, you're, you're a fool. I mean, a real fool. Mm -hmm. And, you know, find out if y'all can, I don't know if it's ethical, but if you find out who these people are, sell them some products. They'll, they'll buy anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're an idiot. Do you, we've talked about this in the past with different, um, different people. People, some people lost a lot in 2016 and maybe have a little bit of that kind of fear. Do you think that that's factoring in or what do you think? No, I, 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 the 2016 trauma, first of all, the polls were not that far off. Public average was like 3.7. So mm -hmm. about 2.1. You, you did have a, a, a late surge in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. I, maybe the polls are a po two points off. So it gets 43 instead of 41. Mm -hmm. You still get clobbered at that number. That's just all people sitting at a bar. Yeah. It doesn't. And, and, and plus, he's the incumbent. <clears throat> he already got about what she was polling. Because yeah. she was more or less the incumbent. Mm -hmm. So let me switch gears a little bit from Trump. What do you think is going on with the attacks on Tammy Duckworth? Because it seems, I, you know, does Tucker Carlson really need to be going after Tammy Duckworth? I think it was a mis mistake. And when they make one, they double down on the mistake. And it, it just, it's, it's just silliness, mm -hmm. right? It's total, total, total silliness. John Avalon had a piece I saw. He's an old friend of mine from my days at CNN. It was just devastating. People should watch it. But, you know, it's not. And then once you make a mistake, you commit to the mistake, and they're going to try to get out of their soul pretty soon. That's, that's, that's a losing fight right there, I can tell you. So when you're looking at the VP market, who are you looking at? We see Kamala at the top. Susan Grace has made a surge recently. Yeah, I don't know. I, I really don't have any particular insight into it. Mm -hmm. I, I really don't. And I, as I, I don't care. Whoever he picks, I'm fine with. I'm just not that fascinated. <clears throat> Why would I risk money on the VP market where I know I'm going to make money on the election outcome? Mm -hmm. I mean, you better who you want, but I don't have an iota of, of any insight. I, I think Biden's, uh, Senator Dodd is headed up there. I think they'll pick somebody he's comfortable with. Yeah, that's the thing I would look at. Who who does he feel like he has some level of comfort with, and that'll be what he does. But I mean, you hear all kind of names coming in and out, and they're looking at this, and you know, maybe they will, maybe they won't. Mm -hmm. uh, but I wouldn't. I don't have any particular insight on that. And if I were playing the markets, I wouldn't play that market. There's too many other. There's too many other easy pickings out there. Is there any price that, you know, if you're looking at people he's comfortable with, Susan Rice, certainly somebody he has a past with, is there any price you would buy Susan Rice at? Yeah, but what is it at now? It's 20. Will, can you pull that back up? It's 20 cents right now. That might be, a, I might do it at 20. I'd like to get a little bit better. Yeah. But uh, I'd probably take Val Demings at, at a dime. Hmm. But I, you know, I, I just don't know, but of what I see on the screen in front of me, I might play, make a small Val Demings play. I, 
Yeah. I have no idea what a relationship with Biden is and the Biden people or anything, but the resume is clearly, you know, outstanding. Um, so when you're looking at the next couple months at those big surprises that might pop up, obviously, you know, you've had time um, in campaigns and those are always kind of fear. Oh, something just, those are always kind of a fear of what might happen. Um, what are you looking for um, and what are the threats and opportunities for each campaign? The Trump campaign has no opportunity. The public has already rendered the verdict on him. If, if, if you look at the, the again, the polling averages his disapproval on both Real Club politics and 538 is 56. The wrong track number, or let's the wrong track number in a country is approaching 70. Mm -hmm. No incumbent in history has ever won with these kind of numbers. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. So it, it, it is more likely to get worse than it, as three things can happen between now and election day, assuming he stays in. It can get better, stays the same, gets worse. Two out of three are a disaster for him. Mm. If he goes to post today, he loses probably 15 points. Maybe get better, maybe he'll lose by 12. What difference does it make? You're stealing money at, at, at 60 cents. So what threats do you think the Biden campaign has then? Because he's, you know, he's playing it pretty safe right now, I think. Why wouldn't he? He would be stupid not to. Hmm. I mean, of course he is. Remember when LSU played Oklahoma, we were up 50 to 10 to half or something like that. So we could have scored another 50 points if we'd have wanted to, but we weren't going to lose the game. <laughs> we just, we're not. He is not going to lose. There's no suspense here in terms of outcome. None. Zero. Do you think Biden appealing, does he have to appeal more to the middle or does he have to appeal more to the left? He has to say, I'm for a change. The left wants a change. The middle wants a change. Everybody wants a change. Right? And you can just feel it. There's no... He's, I think he's doing very well right now, listening to people, positions he's coming out with. Actually, I think the little statements he's been given here are pretty effective. I think he'll have a great convention speech. I mean, it's, I don't really, I'm, I'm working 24 hours a day just trying to run this thing up as big as I can run it. And the, you have no idea at the amount of creative people in this country. The things that they're doing, are what, not even under the Biden campaign. I mean, I, I'm part of a group. We spend, I don't know, $100 million in 77 rural counties. That's a friend of mine spending tens of millions of dollars just in Florida. But it's mm -hmm. all kinds of, the, the, look at these bulwark, Lincoln Project, never Trump people. I mean, that's all this is going on. Biden doesn't have anything to do with that. Yeah. He's got to sit there. The, 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 the energy in this country to get this guy out of here is the lights of nothing. I've never seen in my whole life in politics. I've never seen anything like it. As we're looking at sort of the way campaigns are handling these things, and we'll shift to, to some of the down ballots because I think it'll be great to get your take on that. Um, as we're looking at the way that this is shaping up and we're watching you know, Trump come out and, and want to push schools to reopen, if you're advising both candidates to, on how to handle COVID, what are you saying to Trump and then what are you saying to Biden? Well, okay, I don't know what I'd say to Trump, but that doesn't matter. It's good pay. Look, he's in a 23% right track country and is running on Confederate monuments. All right? I mean, please. All right? What I'd say to Biden, you know, in these questions of schools, I hope we listen to the parents, you know, the PTA, parents groups, because the people that are going to decide how this is going to work are parents. Mm. And when they send their kids to school, they'll want to know. I mean, the idea that there's some edict coming down from somebody, so what Biden needs to say is, you know, just say standard shit. Children are our most precious resource. You know, we want to get them back to school as quickly and safely as possible. And we should listen to the parents of the United States. It's just any crap like that. It's anything, you know, it's not even hard. 
The children are our future. Good. Great, Joe. Go get them. Wonderful. I look into the eyes of a child and I look into the eyes of the future of America. A solid education and, and, you know, good schools and good colleges and I don't know, shit. Get vaccinated. Eat your lunch. <laughs> So that's what you, that, that would be advice. Yeah, would, that would, that would be my advice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fair Children, enough. our future. <laughs> okay, so we're seeing Democratic shifts in states like Texas and Georgia that are creating inroads for Democrats. Um, I found them really kind of fascinating. How do you think each of these states will break this election, um, both the Electoral College and Senate? Um, and how, and do you see anywhere that Republicans are picking up support where they otherwise may not have in either the electoral college or down ballot races? The answer to the second question is no. Yeah. The answer to the first question is, let's take Georgia for, for just a second, the Senate. You have two Senate seats. Georgia is unique. You have to hit 50. Mm -hmm. And they're kind of third parties in there. So you, you could very well have two Georgia Senate seats that are decided in January of 2021. Mm -hmm. They'll ought to make a line on that. And that's not, I wouldn't call it likely, but I wouldn't call it, but it would, it's possible, not probable. Is there, a price, two, 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 huh? Is there a price you'd buy Democrat at? Yeah, I mean, at, at least one. Again, I don't know because we, we, they go to post on, on in November and neither, gets to 50, what the turnout model would be in January is kind of hard to predict. Mm -hmm. If that kind of enthusiasm stays. And the other thing is in Georgia, they, they, I'm trying to run this campaign to get these corporations behind this. They're kind of over to it having fair elections. I mean, what makes me nervous about Georgia, not that, not that votes are not there, is that they don't let people vote. I mean, they'll give you, you go to precincts in Fulton or DeKalb and there'll be two voting machines every 500 people. You go to Northwest Georgia, a Buckhead, there's 50 voting machines for every 500 people. So I, I don't have a great deal of confidence in Georgia pulling this off. I, have, I, I, I would certainly take it if it's any kind of price. And, and what you want to look at is Gwinnett County. Hmm. Gwinnett is the most, one of the most changed counties in, in Texas. You want to look at Fort Bend County. If Biden gets to 60 in Gwinnett, it's over. Hmm. Same thing with Fort Bent. And I think both achievable, both achievable. But those are the two most significant counties, I think, in, the, in this coming elections. Is there a price you buy Dem for um, Texas? Yeah, yeah, 40 cents, 42, 43, sure. Okay. Probably, probably gonna go up. I mean, look, they're mishandling, they're, they're all fighting over the, over the terrible problems with the, with the, with the buyers. Uh, in the, the Texas demographics has changed. And as people got to remember where Beto made the inroads was mm -hmm. all in the white vote. And, and Texas becomes more college educated whites by the day until, until we have this event. And I'll, I'm certainly, I mean, I promise you this, we're going to be there at the finish line. Now, whether, you know, we lose by the head or win by a nose, I don't know. But it, 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 anything, you know, less than 47, I think Texas is a decent buy. Yeah. George, I'm a little more trepidatious about because of the 50% 50, 50 rule. Hmm. The place yeah. I'd really go is Alaska. Alaska Wait, Senate. Let's talk. So talk to me about Alaska Senate. Okay, so the incumbent is Dan Sullivan, Republican, mm -hmm. down line Trump guy. Challenges Al Gross. He's a MD. He's running as an independent, but he's a, supported by the, the Democratic DSCC. The reason I would jump on that now is a Alaska Independence Party candidate just got in the race, and if you look at the history of third parties in Alaska, it's kind of a quirky state. So you can win that with 47. I mean, it's hard to see a non-Republican getting to 50 in Alaska, mm. but you don't have to get there. It, it, when, when, you make, when you're trying to look for value, what you're looking for is you see something that other people don't. You can jump on something at that price. 
I think there's real value in the Alaska Senate. Is there any, really other than Alaska, are there other Senate races you're seeing real value? Um, well, I mean, everybody's caught on to Arizona and Colorado, so there's not much yeah. there. What about Iowa? Uh, Oh, I, 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 I would take Iowa. I would take Iowa if, 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 if Greenfield was 53 cents. Mm -hmm. I would even take it if she was a favorite. There's a story in Atlantic. And yeah, I, I mean, right it, now. I, I was changing. I, I, I would, what, what's Iowa right now? 52.49. I'd take, I'd take the 52. I'd eat that right now. It's only going to get better. Only going to get better. You were saying there's an article in the Atlantic. Just contrasting up, up, just when you read about Greenfield, she's almost like the perfect 2020 candidate. And Ernst, you could, I watched her. She was on uh, Dana Bash. Mm -hmm. She's afraid. You know, when you look at politicians, you, can, you use your power of observation. And, and Ernst is scared to death. Mm -hmm. uh, and she was on there and she was, I don't know, whatever was happening. Do you think, you know, when you're looking at it, it seems like there's momentum in Greenfield's favor. Is there anything Joni Ernst can do to stop that? I don't know, you, because you're caught in these currents, you know, it, it, it's a lot of this, most of the stuff that happens is macro. I mean, sure, she could, I mean, Greenfield could, you know, say that we got to get rid of ethanol or something, but I don't think she's going to be that stupid. <laughs> I mean, I could say, you know, sometimes they can go to a fundraiser and say something, they get caught on cell phone, but, uh, you know, I think she's pretty, yeah. pretty aware of that. I mean, it's always you could have something happen, but right now, I, I like Iowa a lot. 52 cents is pretty good. I, I, you know, I bet you two weeks ago, it was a lot less than that. It was. Ernst is um, just, she's scared and in trouble. What are you thinking about Montana, James and Bullock? Well, let's look at the price right now. Let me pull it up. I think that it's it's more heavily in favor of Bullock. It's gone down a little yeah, I like, bit. Okay, he's a friend of mine, so obviously there's something nice about him. He's won two elections there. Yeah. He's raising money like crazy. I mean, go look at these fundraising numbers. Yeah. And they mean something. I mean, that's the kind of w wisdom of the masses. And... Uh, you know, the people have a history of voting for him. I, I would, he said, for, he had 57 now. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, that, 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 I don't know what I do is I would certainly take Biden at 60. As a, as a, I love Steve, I, you know, but Biden at 60 is much safer bet than Steve at, at 57. Interesting. So I, much actually, risk I actually live out here in Montana, so I've been paying pretty close attention. To oh, I got a lot of friends out there. And I, you know, Messina and uh, yeah. got the Tasta, you know, at home. I love Montana. It's a cool people for that. <laughs> well, we try, we try. Um, so my friend Ray Rose up and God used to work with in politics in Baton Rouge. He's got a, he lives up there almost full time now, I think. We all exile from DC out here. <laughs> so, um, how do you factor in market forecasts alongside polls and other metrics when you're looking at this? How do you, how, what does that factor into your I, You opinion? know, I, not, not a whole lot. I mean, I talk to so many posters. Yeah. And, and I talk to people that talk to posters. And, you know, when you know when it's coming, when these guys say, well, James, you know, I, I tell you the truth, I had to wait it down a little bit. Some of these samples are starting to come in too democratic. When you hear that a lot, then you know that, you know what's happening. And, and the thing you want to look for too, is people say, this is a stupid thing people say, well, look, they look at what percent of the Republicans that Trump's getting or yeah. what percent the Democrats are getting. All right, that's self-described ID. That number is fluid. Hmm. So, so maybe Trump is getting 86, 7% of the Democrats yeah. and Biden's getting 91, I mean, the Republicans, Biden's getting 91% of the Democrats. But the number of self-described Republicans and Democrats is a fluctuating number. And when you talk to as many posters as I do, you know, I'll always ask them about party ID. Mm. And, and the, the, most people who report on politics have not figured this out. 
Yeah. But that's to, to the extent that she can dig that number up. That's an important number. When you're looking at this election, obviously we've talked a lot about the presidential. When you're looking at the enthusiasm for Trump or the enthusiasm for Biden, do you weight those numbers or are you okay. the number of the people who are against Trump? So the more vote, so right now Biden's average is 51. Hmm. Okay. So there's a lot of people that are voting for Biden because they just can't stand Trump. Well, they're not going to describe themselves as enthusiastic. Yeah. So Trump's only, he's at, he's at 41. Well, if, if Biden went to 41, the percent of people voting for him that were enthusiastic would go up. It's a stupid number right now. Okay. Just, there's just something that people say. It's, it's, it, as the lead expands, the people that are enthusiastic about you were there from the start. You had them when you, when you started. The people that you're adding are not necessarily people who be enthusiastic about it, but they feel like they don't have another place to go. Well, I kind of like the guy, you know, mm. not crazy about it, but I'm still going to vote for him. And as the, the people start peeling off the Republican Party, they're not going to be enthusiastic about having to vote for a Democrat. But no. They will. And the people that are left, you're left with a smaller, purer party. But that's, that's not how you win an election. Yeah. So I want to change, because you mentioned something about polling in Georgia. And, and um, so we've heard a lot of talk about integrity in this election and the potential for problems in the transfer of power. Um, should the president lose, how much stock do you put in that conversation? What are your concerns and, and voter, you know, the availability of polls and you know, stuff like that? I would, I would describe myself as, very concerned, particularly in a state like Georgia, uh, other places, Florida, at, at ballot access, mm -hmm. right? I'm not at remotely concerned that he's not going to leave office. A person, I'm not even sure he's going to run. And if he did, I got news for you. Those four-star generals, they would gladly perform an extraction procedure. Mm -hmm. Nothing would make them happier than to take him and throw him out on Pennsylvania Avenue. <laughs> So I'm not, I'm not worried about at all about that. Do you think some of the, the talk is just rhetoric that's trying to instill fear? You, you know, they got to fill up so many hours a day. Yeah. Right? So somebody's got to say something. <laughs> People go, they go on TV and they say, well, if you want to get back on, I'm going to say something provocative. I don't think he's going to leave office. I think he's going to, you know, no, I'm going to leave office. And by the way, he's going to get a bad Supreme Court decision tomorrow. You got the Mary Trump book out. Yeah. You've got H.R. McMaster book coming. you got the Bob Woodward book coming. I mean, all of the things that are coming are just utter disasters. Yeah, and you're talking utter about disasters. tax returns tomorrow. Yeah, and, okay. and he's going to lose that. I'm not a court expert, but people that are, are almost unanimous. Yeah, I think that what and, I've and heard... it's not going to be 5-4. Yeah, I've heard sort of that, that what people are saying is that he will lose the grand jury's um, the grand jury side, but when the congressional side is sort of maybe the anticipated. It, it might. You're going to lose the New York case for sure. Yeah. I don't know how they're going to rule against him on, on the congressional side because the language of the 1924 law is, is clear as a bell, but I'd love to see if they do, I'd be interested in the legal gymnastics, how they get out of that. It's pretty fascinating the role the Supreme Court has been taking, right, recently. So. Yeah, I know. I mean, I went to law school and passed the ball, but not, I don't follow it. I mean, I'm not a SCOTUS watcher, but I, I know people that are. Yeah. And he's definitely going to lose, lose the New York State case. Mm -hmm. So it's something for people to keep an eye on tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Yeah. It's just more uh, bad news. So we're going to shift gears a little bit. Um, here's a look at the chances in the S&P 500 versus, uh, or the changes in the S&P 500 versus the changes in Trump's odds of reelection over the last few months. What do you make of these? Why, despite Trump suggesting the market will, quote, disintegrate if he loses, do they seem to be unfazed? Because no one, because he's going to lose, all right? It's, 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 it's a done deal. He was going to say anything. Mm -hmm. and, and by the way, if you, you want go, a stronger stock market, vote Democratic. I mean, there's so much body of research on that. It, it, it's breathtaking. So, mm -hmm. I, but, but he's going to say something. 
it, it, it's almost 100 percent of the time going to say something stupid. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, but Biden's probably going to have to do some things for the country that that are going to be difficult. I mean, it's gonna, man's going to have a really difficult job, but he's going to have this job. <laughs> that's for sure. What What's your take on Kanye West? <laughs> guy's not even my take is everybody he's not even qualified on a single ballot i, I don't know but people tell me the kind of shrewd marketer isn't he married to that uh what's the name uh but, 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 my take on my daughter there's much chance that that she'll be president kind of well sometimes and, and I, I don't really don't i don't have a take on because i haven't thought anything about it yeah. I had to call some people to make sure I know who he was because they'll put that on that you might ask me about it. He's not <laughs> qualified in a single state. Fair enough. No, I just th I thought I'd throw it in because it's a little newsworthy right now. So I'm going to move over to the questions that traders have, um, which I think hopefully will be exciting for everyone. Um, so we'll start with if Trump drops out, who carries the GOP banner? Yeah, I don't know because he would all his delegates are, are very Trumpy delegates, you know, and whoever he said they would, you know, it, it'll be so catastrophic. I mean, they got a mess. It, it, I, I, I think they're gonna stay in because they still got a lot of money left to steal. I mean, remember the inauguration committee is being looked into. I mean, it's, they came in stealing. They're gonna go out stealing. Mm. The, the Southern District of New York is got this whole full-fledged investigation into the whole inauguration committee. And by the way, the book coming out on by Mrs. Trump's top aide, she's got a book coming out that they already touted is going to be highly negative. And she was very involved in, in the inauguration. Hmm. Okay. Which, you know, so it, it just it's a bad, the bad, the, the blows are just going to keep coming and coming and coming. So how does this lead up to this election compared to 2016 when Hillary was presumed to be the next president? Yeah, I said, everybody asked the question. The <laughs> polls were off by 1.8. Okay, yeah. what do you want me to do? She won the popular vote by 2 million votes. It was a distributional freak in, in three states. But, but I mean, I, I don't know what else to say. Okay. It's just nothing. And she was the incumbent. Biden is not the incumbent. It's all the difference in the world. It's the last, the last thing that people, well, Bob, but, 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 but you thought Hillary was going to win. Okay. I mean, I knew LSU was going to beat Oklahoma at halftime. <laughs> I was scared that we wouldn't beat Alabama at the start of the game, but we did. It's the same thing. Okay. So how will Democrats, um, how the Democrats will rule the next generation? Sorry, I need to go on to another one that, uh, does he think Trump will drop out? Um, we've got that one already answered. Sorry, I've got to go through some of these. So in the November election, there'll be a lot of mail-in votes um, that will not be counted for days or weeks after the election. It seems like mid-November could be a, a wild time um, when Republican Democratic lawyers square off over alleged vote counting shenanigans. Are you concerned about any specific secretaries of state? So I think Goldman Sachs has a research paper out today but they say it could be weeks before we know. We'll know on election night, but it's going to be so massive that it's not going to be at much doubt. Now, yeah. look, it took them a, a week to count the Kentucky votes. And I, I'm not, a, I know there's going to be a lot of lawyers everywhere. I, I, I'm concerned about ballot access, but that's not my end of the business, if you will. Mm -hmm. but, but we're going to know. I mean, NBC News is going to predict two minutes after the polls close that, that Joe Biden's going to be next president. If Trump loses this time, um, who picks up the banner for the Republican Party 2024? Well, I think he's going to lose massively. And I'm not sure. Uh, because uh, it's a lot of, I, th I think some of these what they're going to probably be looking for, you know, just like the Democrats are looking for anybody that can win. It's all they care about. 
Mm -hmm. You know, Bernie Sanders can't win, well, for Joe Biden. There probably will be somewhat of that mood. And I, I think there will do someone more stylistically pleasing. And I don't think it's going to be like a Tom Cotton. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that, you know. You think like a Will Hurd or a Nikki Haley, somebody like that? Might be something like that. You know, somebody just a little, not as confrontational. I mean, it's going to be a conservative party, but I, it, the, the trauma of this defeat is going to be 56 Democratic senators. Mm. I mean, the, 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 you, just, you have no idea what it's like when you suffer a defeat of the magnitude that they're going to suffer. Mm. It, just, it literally changed. You know, instead of Mike Tyson, he hits you so hard, he changes the way you taste. They're going to taste different. Mm. They're not, no one is psychologically equipped to deal with the magnitude of this. Yeah. I don't think I am. So we have some people asking about the electoral college margin of victory. Um, what are you, what are you thinking? Show me some numbers. So we'll pull it up. Um, What's okay. plus 350? Uh, if Will can scroll down a little bit more, you can see that. Um, People are running at yeah, eighty at the highest. I think. Um, if you almost down, guarantee you get three fifty. Okay. I bet if I'm right, could get. I, 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 what kind of whatever price you get, and I, I would take a flyer on sort of a, a, a real, real, real big one. I would take a. I'd, I'd make a bet on over four hundred just because you're probably going to get such a good price. You're not going to lose very much anyway. Yeah, I think it's at 334 in our larger, um, on the map on the, the front page. Take the over, pound the over, pound the over. Which, which, if you're looking at North Carolina, do you think North Carolina goes, goes down? I do. I, I, I think Arizona, Colorado, yeah. probably a little bit safer, but I'll be looking for some price there. But I think North Carolina will be, yes. What about Ohio? You know, uh, it, it, Jeff Guerin has a poll showing Missouri within two, mm. right? I, I, I'll tell you the place that I would kind of think, of, and you'd get a really long price, mm -hmm. is South Carolina. South Carolina demographics are changing. Yeah. Really scared. I mean, I, I, should, I wouldn't take it at 60, 40, or 70, 30, but if I had a really long price, mm -hmm. Of all of the deep red states, that would be the one I'd take. Interesting. Ohio, just, it was, we did so poorly, I, I'd kind of fallen out of my mind. And, you know, the, the, you didn't have a, the wave in, in 2018 did not hit Ohio and Florida. Florida's almost guaranteed. Mm. Michigan, they're not even going to contest Michigan. Right? So, the, the, maybe what happened is 2018 wave is now going to hit, it's obviously going to hit Florida. <clears throat> and, you know, if you look at the data coming out of Ohio, it's, it's, it's quite discouraging for Trump. Quite discouraging. When you're looking at South Carolina, how much of a chance do you think Lindsey um, Lindsay Graham has? I, I would take Jamie at 35. Okay. So. I, mean, uh, I, I, would, I would definitely take, I mean, I, I, I don't think that we're, Democrats are going to win South Carolina, but if you get enough value, you, <clears throat> you, might, you might go in. Do you think that um, mail-in ballots will be an, have any impact? Are you worried I about guess, that? Yeah, every state has it different, and I just, there's 50 different elections. And these have become, from my time in politics, the Republicans always like mail-in ballots. It, it, but they're going to try to do, wherever they have complete control, Georgia, mm -hmm. Florida, they're going to try to do everything they can to see that older people have an easier time to vote than younger people. Just, just right out the playbook. Now, how successful they're going to be at that, I don't know. I really yeah. don't. Um. When it comes to the number one electoral market, you, you can make money in make money South Carolina. Is there anywhere else that you think you could can make some money? Yeah, I'm starting. Well, Florida, if you got it, what's the price in Florida right now? That, that 
Biden wins. Well, can you pull that up real quick? So it's um it's 60 at Democratic right now that Biden wins. It's kind of caught up to it. That's that's still a good bet at 60. Yeah. I mean the veterans are you know are, are catching on. When you're looking at the margin of victory on Demo on the Senate in the House, what are you what are you looking at? I mean the House would be more so than many, so I mean you probably have a ceiling. But I think most of the sharpies are thinking ten to fifteen seats maybe. Mm. Right? The Senate I I I take fifty five. Yeah. Do you, do you think plus when you're looking at the Senate, how many seats? Well, if I say 55 and we have 43, then that's eight, I think. Yeah. So, but I think um, it might be better. Let me see if I have any other. How do you feel about the Kentucky Senate race? I mean, that's the 58 Senate seat. I'm not yeah. saying it can't be done, but that that's South Carolina is much easier than Kentucky. Yeah. Kentucky's really tough, tough in the national election. I'm pulling up the chat to see if we can grab any other stuff. Um, in the 2020 election, if it's the blowout, it's as big as you anticipate. Where would you advise Biden to spend his money? I would definitely uh, I spend a lot in Georgia and Texas, for sure. And I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd plow it. I really would. Uh, I mean, Florida. I mean, the, the problem is, is that all of the, these big states that these oh, really, really expensive. I mean, uh, I mean, look, Trump is running ads in the Florida Panhandle. Yeah. Good God, does that tell you something? But they're all skimming the money. Yeah. What do you think about the Kansas Senate race? I, as I appreciate it, it depends on the, the betting odds. I, you know, the Democratic governor, and I was looking at one of the projections for the Electoral College, and actually had Kansas is in kind of pink, which kind of surprised me. <clears throat> so something is going on there, and I, but I think it's a. Although I saw a poll, the Koblik, or the other guy, didn't matter much how the Democrat was doing. I just don't know enough about it. Yeah. So not enough to venture how you should bet it. Um, what do you think about Sen Senator Collins? Do you think she's a goner? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Is there a price at which you would you would take her? Sixteen cents. Something low. Okay. Um, so I think that might actually be all the questions that we've gotten. So. <laughs> Um, we really, really appreciate your time. Sorry about the technical, you know, back and forth, but um, hopefully we'll be able to have you back on in the near future. And always a pleasure, always a pleasure chatting with you. You bet. Okay, thanks guys. Thanks for sticking around for the technical issues. <laughs> we really appreciate it. Take care.